Hello, everybody. Welcome to another installment of Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. And it's an installment that I do not intend to be very long, though it will be what it will be. Um, I just woke up from a nap. I sound like shit. Probably look like shit. <laughs> uh, between solstice energies that are about the equivalent of a hundred full moons combined with ten mercury retrogrades and being bent over by the sun and sodomized by solar flares and all sorts of wonderful crazy uh, things have been very intense and reflective and so on and so forth it's all over the place Got seasonal allergies messing with me a little bit, so if I suddenly am sneezing and coughing in your ear, please forgive that. Um, or suddenly blowing my nose or whatever. <clears throat> I'm sure my voice sounds a bit nasal at the moment, anyway. Uh, oh. Excuse me. So, yes, um, the topic, addiction and satisfaction, I'm just compelled to, uh, to do as short of a rant as possible on that. Because I've been kind of getting this reflected with, like, everything and everyone. <clears throat> and I'm realizing... It's really, really, really difficult to tell the difference between addiction and satisfaction while living in a society that tells us that satisfaction is wrong. You know, hence the song, I can't get no da -da -da, satisfaction. Da -da -da, da -da. Yeah, <laughs> it's not really so much I can't get to know, but I have a belief system that says I shouldn't get to know, because if I do, then I'm naughty. Ha ha. <clears throat> and that's just a crock of shit. So we become addicted to the idea of satisfaction. Not addicted to satisfaction in and of itself, because we live in a world where we have the awareness and the technology to have perpetual abundance. I mean, it's crazy. All scarcity right now is artificially generated because of greed. I mean, you know, we got unlimited energy in about a zillion different ways, but... You got a bunch of corrupt, greedy fucking douchebags with a multi-trillion dollar piggy bank called the oil industry. Um, you got all this medical technology and medical discoveries that they keep suppressing. And when people put them online, you know, obviously they do their best to block them off. You're, you know, you go to things like free energy or free medical websites or whatever, and all of the sudden... You got this big thing, your browser's popping up like, warning, danger, this site could be dangerous. If you proceed, you're at your own risk, and da da da, big scary fucking disclaimer there. When you try to go to the site that's, you know, giving you some information that you actually need. And, you know, you notice on the news and everything in the world, it's all about fear, 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 fear. You know, they're trying to pump you full of more fear. Oh, my God, ISIS this, and Muslims that, and, and, and even in some places, oh, crazy Christians here, oh, my God, and, you know, crazy Jews there, and crazy Americans here, and crazy Russians there, and, oh, my God, the world is falling apart, oh, woe is me, terror, 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 fear, terror, ah, so, yeah, they're trying to, like, bombard you and fill your head full of that bullshit. So, yeah, 
<clears throat> our society is based on that you know simplified you could call it fear of abandonment because what is abandonment fear of things going away so if you've got things being destroyed that's obviously a process of going away but some things really really need to go away such as addiction and you know we're kind of in the stockholm syndrome negative feedback loop of suffering and misery that we're in the process of getting out of in my opinion i don't think things would be so chaotic if there wasn't a lot of really good things happening but people forget when you turn the light on in the dark room you know everything that used to be there still is there in that dark room you couldn't see it before now you can because the lights turned on you're probably not going to like it when you see it. As a matter of fact, chances are you're probably really, 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 really not going to like it. You're probably going to hate it more than you hated anything. But we don't interpret it as that. We like to pretend to ourselves that we were in this really dark and scary but completely safe and empty room. Oh, yeah, it's totally safe and empty. Nothing was ever there perfect room aside from the fact that it was completely dark and we couldn't see where we were going and we were always tripping over things but other than that safe room and then we turn on the light switch and you know scotty from from fucking star trek just like he decides to be like a little troll so like now he's beaming all sorts of shit into that room that he knows you're gonna hate and like it's just gonna totally fuck with your ass so yeah scotty being a prickish little douchebag troll he's just Beam and all this bad fucking shit into the room right as you turn the light switch on. That's not really what's happening, but that's the way our ego wants to perceive it. We turn on the light switch and, oh, woe is me. I'm being victimized because, you know, there was this perfectly safe room with nothing in it that I didn't like. I only didn't like the darkness. That was all that was in it that I didn't like. And I turn on this light, and God damn it, some fucking troll is just beaming all this shit in here that was not in here before. And uh, it actually, it all was in there before. You were tripping over it, couldn't actually see it. But it was in there before. And that's how we're taught to interpret it, and it's, it's ridiculous. But, you know, that's, that's why <clears throat> a lot of people think, oh my God, the world is getting worse. The world isn't getting worse. We turn the fucking light switch on, people. It's getting better. It's just there's a whole bunch of shit that was creeping around in the dark. It's been creeping around in the dark for thousands of years. We can see it now. And it's nasty. <laughs> so fucking deal with it. It doesn't mean things are getting worse. It means I can see clearly now that my bullshit paradigms are gone or whatever. <clears throat> anyway, so what does this have to do with addiction and satisfaction? Well, very easy. We become addicted to comfort, which by comfort I don't mean nice things. I mean comfortable with misery. <laughs> misery loves company. So we're addicted to things as they've been while moving into a paradigm of, of what things are becoming. And so as a lot of these quote-unquote bad things are being taken away, these quote-unquote bad things, or at the very least, if not bad, we can say counterproductive and destructive, these things are being taken away and replaced with good things. But the problem is, we're addicted to those shitty things. So as they get taken away, we see this as an attack on us, as the world getting worse. Oh my God, this douchebag troll asshole who I've always hated who was in my life, he's leaving or she's leaving. How dare they? Oh my God, I'm so addicted to them fucking with me and now they're not going to be there anymore to do that. They they didn't have my permission to leave at that victimizing bastard. There, how dare they? 
oh my god these good people and good things are moving into my life in in that douchebag's place oh how dare they impose themselves on me and do that i was never taught how to handle these good things and good people i was only taught how to how to handle bullshit and suffering and how to create more of my past and my present to continue to propel that into my future. That's all I was taught. I'm addicted to that. It's my drug. So, yeah. People are kind of raging pretty hard right now as this process continues. And Another thing people confuse with the idea of satisfaction is that egotistical, energetic vampirism, um, being a control freak or getting revenge on a control freak, which is still being a control freak, it's just a different variety. But there's nothing wrong with being satisfied about the idea of a control freak getting what's been coming to them. I mean, if you've got a control freak that's been a nasty little fucking troll towards you, and all of a sudden what they put out is coming back, and they're getting bent over and raped, metaphorically speaking, and you're looking at that laughing your ass off, feeling completely satisfied, society's told you, oh, you can't do that. You shouldn't do that. That's wrong. It makes you a horrible, nasty person if you do that. <laughs> no, I disagree. As a matter of fact, the judgment of that being wrong is what caters to addiction to vengeance. See, and as that, as that spirals forward and that propels, then you're thinking, oh, this person's done stuff to me, so I need to get revenge in order to feel that satisfaction. I'm not... I'm not going to learn the physics of how the universe works. No, no, no. I'm going to bow in reverence and worship fire like a god. I'm going to become the tool of the tools. You know, the idea of things like getting getting revenge and, you know, throwing these big fits about not being able to micromanage everything like a goddamn Nazi fucking Hitler control freak and all this other bullshit society teaches us to do and has us shoving our heads up our fucking asses like a bunch of goddamn idiots. You know, it's all just, it's completely silly. It is completely and totally silly. I mean, learning to laugh at yourself is really great. And it, it really helps you just kind of clear out your own inner, inner Nazi as time goes on. So now for my own personal reflections around me that I've been facing that have prompted this rant in the first place. Well, <clears throat> everything I just ranted about, I'm starting to see it reflected around me in various different ways. Um, Rich, General Tate, whatever you want to call him, he's going through some circumstances in which really good stuff is flowing into his reality while well, simultaneously some negative counterproductive and destructive bullshit is in the process of making its exit and it really forces you to face your own internal battle and internal judgments about yourself when some of that bullshit that's needed to go for a while is a part of what you've known as your family that's leaving in one way or another so yeah again that idea of addiction versus satisfaction being addicted to to the sameness um, and the idea of those yucky aspects leaving, like, you know, like finally they're going, yeah, I'm feeling satisfied about that, and then comes up like, uh-oh, society caught me, I shouldn't feel satisfied, uh-oh, it's fine. And there's Katerina Edwards. 
awesome, wonderful, beautiful friend who's been facing her own internal Nazi as she is what you might call a recovering new ager if you want to call it that. So recently there's been this big, huge, judgmental, new agey douchebag that just stuck his proverbial metaphorical cock in her face. And she's looking at him like, how dare him? How dare him? How dare him? How dare him? Because it's reminding her of that aspect of herself. And she's talked at length about that aspect of herself. You can, you can see that in her videos if you like. As a matter of fact, there's a video that we just made here over at PSEC called What Exactly Is Fear? And a part of that video has some ep excerpts of Katerina going on exactly that sort of style of a rant. I mean, there's lots of other stuff in there, too, but that's one of the examples I give as far as the topic of fear. So you can see her going on that sort of a rant in that video. You know, she's done that sort of thing plenty of times. If you go to her YouTube channel, you can even see that she's made a rant on, you know, practical application with, quote, unquote, dealing with your dark side and so on and so forth. So nothing new under the sun, as they say. Um, my friend Tiffany's been facing a lot of stuff, and speaking of facing a lot of stuff, she just suddenly deactivated her, uh, you know, her Facebook, like, um, but a, a month, month and a half ago, whatever the hell it was, and she's recently come back, and she messaged me stating, well, I'm going to simplify this. It's about the idea of Facebook itself acting as a reflection. I mean, you know, let's 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 look at Facebook in general. Let's let's look at what that is. All these different opinions about it, right? You got some people that are like, "Oh, Facebook is great. You can just you can put content out to your demographic and." Just all these people that you want to see your stuff is, are going to see it and come to your YouTube channel or your Twitter or your or your TSU slash Sue, whatever, or your this or your that or your DeviantArt or da-da-da-da-da. Oh, it's wonderful. It really brings in more demographic. It's great. I love it. Then you have the people that are like, no, there's all just a bunch of assholes and trolls and and false flags and bad news and this and that and all things horrible and yucky and Facebook is run by the CIA and da 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 and Facebook is terrible and horrible and there's nothing but yuck on Facebook and I don't even know why I'm here or oh no I shouldn't have the Facebook account because you know that's just fucking Satan over there Satan you know fuck that evil Facebook motherfucker you know so either way, there's all these different opinions, both extremely positive and extremely negative, and everything in between. Oh, Facebook's okay. I have basically good experiences on Facebook, but, you know, I'm kind of addicted to it. I spend way too much time on Facebook, so I'm going to blame Facebook because I can't handle facing my own self internally. Yeah, there's a lot of that, too. And, you know, and from my perspective, uh, Tiffany is just uh, yet another instance of exactly that very common sort of thing. And Facebook is just a tool. And if she left Facebook indefinitely, you know, something else would just, it would just pop up in her face to replace Facebook. Whether it was something or someone, whether it was digital or not, whether it had to do with computers or not. Um, I told her because she's not a vampire, she can't look in the mirror and see no reflection. <laughs> so, physical reality is a quantum mirror. You cannot piss in the fan and get no blowback. <laughs> you can't look into the mirror and get no reflection. So, whatever, and because 
we see the world as we are, not as it is. You can't help but look out into the world and see it literally from your own perspective. You don't see it from the perspective of Hitler. You don't see it from the perspective of Stalin. You don't see it from the perspective of Pol Pot. You don't see it from the perspective of a military general. You don't see it from the perspective of a saint. You don't, you don't see it from the perspective of a lot of different things that you're probably not. From the most positive to the most negative and everything in between... You can't see all those things from all those perspectives, because that's not you. What you do see, however, is things from your own perspective. And everybody else sees reality from their own perspective. So that is why, no matter what, whatever it is you think you're trying to run from, you can't escape. Because you're only trying to run from you. All you can do is face it. <laughs> And as your perspective shifts, the physical reality around you will shift. And there's nothing mystical about it. Nothing woo-woo about it. In fact, it's actually kind of common sense if you look at it logically. Your judgments or lack thereof about things in your external reality are the difference between driving drunk and not driving drunk. Anything you do drunk's probably not going to work out too well. And that not working out too well is a very, a very physical thing, isn't it? If you crash your car into a fucking tree, that is a very physical fucking thing you're doing there. And alcohol is obviously something that can inebriate you, mess with your senses, distort your reality. Well, judgment is a distortion shit, you know, whether you're talking about being ethical or not in psychology, or being practical or not in science, or being moral or not in religion, or what have you. It's pretty pretty common sense there. If you got a buttload of judgment, it's like being drunk. If you got a buttload of unresolved anger, it's like being drunk. If you got a buttload of unresolved sadness, that's like being drunk. Drunk on misery, it's like it's has the same effect on you neurologically, biologically as getting pissed drunk on alcohol. Same effect, and that is something that you can look at psychologically, biologically, neurologically, and you could see in that common sense, quote unquote, reality that there it is. There's the proof. There's the evidence. This does have physical consequences. And anything that has physical consequence, you can view in your external, can't you? Whether someone is drunk on the idea of texting on their cell phone while they're driving when they should be watching the goddamn road, or whether they're literally drunk on alcohol, when they hit that tree or they hit that car in front of them or they drive off that cliff or whatever, <laughs> whatever the inevitable end result happens to be, it doesn't matter whether or not there was literal alcohol in their system. The effect was the same, and it created a consequence in physical reality, and it was dire circumstances, and it was nasty. So it's, it's the same thing here. Just like... A lot of the ancient peoples, not all of them, but a lot of the ancient peoples judged storms as the wrath of a pissed off god or gods. So, you know, they sacrificed all kinds of virgins and did all sorts of horrible, stupid shit. Thinking that if they satisfied the god's bloodlust by spilling enough blood, then the storm would stop or or the drought would stop, or whatever it was. It's all this weather phenomenon. But they didn't have radar, and they didn't have satellites, and they didn't have an understanding that the world's weather systems were all connected, or that weather systems even existed in the first place. Just like the ancient Europeans thought the Earth was flat. They were terrified of falling off the edge of the flat Earth. They had no idea that it was round. 
So there's a lot of basic, simple belief systems and judgments that have profound physical impact in our physical reality that is physical, that you can reach out and touch and it can reach out and touch you. So yes, your belief systems, your non-physical belief systems that are just in your head do absolutely determine the end result physical reality around you. And you don't have to get esoteric or mystical or quantum to understand that. Yes, those, those understandings are valid and they're an expanded view that clarifies a lot of things. You can just have the basic understanding that if your head is filled with stupid, it can crash you into the tree, same as drinking alcohol can. If you're filled with judgment, if you're filled with all this bullshit, that there's going to be consequences. And that if you actually even, that, that the idea of judging the idea of you being filled with bullshit as being bad, that creates a negative feedback loop because self-judgment external judgment the brain doesn't know the difference people from the brain's perspective all data is happening inside of itself it doesn't know the difference between internal and external judge someone else judge yourself brain doesn't know that not at its basic operating system level all it knows is we're running the program of judgment right now that's it that's all it knows it's like all your computer knows is you went to Facebook.com or YouTube.com or whatever. You think it has an opinion about whether or not the video you're watching is or isn't funny? <laughs> no. That's a judgment, isn't it? Yeah, your computer doesn't give a shit. The computer doesn't judge. So, yeah, I've been observing all sorts of things in my reality that <clears throat> have been on this theme of addiction and insatisfaction. Or we're addicted to the judgment and we're told we're not allowed to have satisfaction. And we create these negative feedback loops for ourselves. You know, like I said, I'm seeing it with Rich. I've been seeing it with Tiffany. I've been seeing it with Katarina. Um, I've been seeing it in my own life with people coming and people going. A lot of the quote-unquote destructive things are going. And there's also people that are coming and going temporarily so that they can kind of like work out their bullshit and then only align with me when it's convenient for both me and them to align. So it's, it's a willingness to let go to that idea that even when we're dealing with shit, it doesn't have to be abandonment and misery and suffering and pain and all that. It can be easier than we've taught, we've been taught that it, it should be. It can definitely be easier. And I'm not used to that. A lot of people, you know, they look at all the videos I've done and the things I post and blah, blah, blah. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, Dave must be used to things going great. No, Dave is used to things sucking ass. Dave is used to misery paradigm. Dave is used to being things hor things being horrible. That's what Dave Kelso is fucking used to, okay, people? Dave Kelso is not this fucking saint. As a matter of fact, for those of you who think that I'm some fucking saint, why don't you talk to the people that think I'm a fucking loser, that think I am the most insufferable piece of shit to hit this planet since whatever, <laughs> okay? Everybody's got their opinions, their different perspectives on reality, on me, on anything and everything. It's not right or wrong. It's just whatever someone decides to feel. Someone decides to, you know, think I'm so great and wonderful and whatever. Well, cool, but I hope you realize I'm not better than you. And I hope you realize that your opinion does not mean that I am some expert in, you know, wonderful realities. Just like you, I'm used to things being shit. That's been my reality for most of my life. And the things that are coming in more and more that are really good, that are really great, and all these lessons learned and things continue to get better and better, well, simultaneously, a lot of the shit is still there. 
almost seems like a contradiction to the old paradigm view, doesn't it? How can things be good and bad at the same time? Well, guess what? They can. So deal with it. They can. They Yes, they really can. And it can be really confusing. And ego wants to go, no, no, it, it can only be good or bad, not both. No. Well, that's when you got to kind of let that be the little kid crying in the back seat. Let it cry. Just because it's their crying does not mean you have to view its opinions as being the only real reality. Just like if a little three-year-old is crying in the corner and telling you the world's going to end tomorrow and the moon's made of green cheese and that you have to stab yourself in the testicles with a fucking knife or vagina or whatever it is you, whatever you're equipped with down there. You're not going to look at that three-year-old and be like, oh my god, I have to obey this three-year-old. I have to believe it is the only real reality because, oh my god, the fact that they are there speaking words means it's true. Oh, woe is me. I am done for. No, you're not doing that. You're looking at that three-year-old, half amused and half annoyed, and going, you know, well, they're three. It's just a three-year-old having a little temper tantrum because it doesn't know any better, you know. And that's how you look at a three-year-old. Well, we all have that internal three-year-old or that internal Nazi, if you if you prefer that euphemism. We've all got that. And we think that we either have to obey it or lock it in a cage and, and get it away from us. Go away, Nazi. No, I shun you. Shun, shun, shun. Love and light. Shun the dark. That creates just as much dysfunction as as becoming of, you know, <laughs> that darkness. Because what you resist persists. And if you are resonating that frequency of judgment, then you are going to become of that frequency. Another way of saying that is if you are standing waist deep in a pit of shit, and you're standing there judging the shit. You're so busy standing there judging it that you are not walking your ass out of that pit of shit. You're not climbing out of that and removing your clothes and going in and taking a, a shower and, you know, washing all that shit off of you and changing into some new clean clothes. You're not doing all that if you're standing in that pit of shit, judging the fuck out of the pit. And all your focus is on, oh, oh, I shun you, pit of shit. I shun you. I'm all of the love and the light, and I shun you. You're still covered in shit. Thank you very much. And just like these people learning a law of attraction, that's that's kindergarten shit. That's like the little kid learning about the, the real trucks by way of the toy truck. They're similar. The toy truck is a representation. But it's not literally the real truck. The real truck has a gas tank and, and pistons and an engine and, and a freaking transmission and oil and, and antifreeze and, and, you know, all of its different fluids and, and parts and components that the little plastic toy does not have. And the real ones, they're out on the roads and on the highways. And if you crash the little toy plastic truck into a wall, it's no big deal. But if you crash a real truck into a wall, it's kind of a big deal. So there's differences. Big differences. Well, the Law of Attraction group, or we'll call it Spirituality 1.0 if you like, they look at it this way, toy truck way. Oh, there's this magical genie out there. And if I take my ego and what my ego wants and what my ego desires and completely ignore the idea of actually learning about anything, I'm going to surrender my power while well, pretending I'm not surrendering my power. I'm going to surrender it to the idea of this genie, this magic genie, and I'll call it the universe. Oh, genie, I'm going to visualize, and if I visualize just correctly enough, that you approve of it just enough, then genie of love, attraction, you will bring to me that new car and that new house and that whatever. 
And the real confusing bitch is, is that <laughs> a lot of times that's what will happen. Because remember, you're in control of your reality. So if you believe something strongly enough, it will happen. But you've got all these other belief systems coexisting alongside that. The belief in the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, and the belief in misery is my only real reality, and belief in nothing good ever happens to me. And, and all these belief systems that this educational system that's literally been built on neo-Nazism, go go research it. It's it's I'm quoting historical fact, not conspiracy theory, not opinion. Um, yeah, so no matter what law of attraction seminars you listen to or whatever. The core of your foundation is still based in neo-Nazism, and you can shun that darkness and judge it and look away and be as lovey and lighty as you want. That's only going to help it co-opt you more. <laughs> the dark will continue to co-opt you the more you shun it. The more you fear the fire instead of seeing it as a tool. The more you think you have to sacrifice virgins to the angry gods instead of learning about weather systems. So you will get that car, and then you will lose it. Or whatever appropriate quantum reflection to represent you being full of shit is most in alignment with you. So you can look at that and go, oh, woe is me. My original belief systems were right. Law of attraction is just bullshit. I shouldn't do it. I'm so worthless and helpless and stupid and everybody and everything is more better and powerful than me. I should just give this up. Oh, woe is me. And look at how justified the high, the arrogant high, like a potent drug. Look at how much your ego is loving and enjoying that justification that it thinks is satisfaction, but it's not. It's addiction. So the more ability that you have to do that, the worse the addiction, the greater the high. So isn't it really common sense as to what these so-called globalist elites are about and what they're feeling? They are the most immature, insecure fuckers on the planet. Because they have so much money and so much resource and so much time and so much opportunity. To become perpetually more insecure and in, immature. Whatever you practice, you become really good at. And they are so efficient and so skilled and so resourceful in practicing how to be insecure, immature, psychopathic control freaks. Does that look to you like intelligence? Does it look to you like they're in any way coordinated? Or does it look more like a bunch of pissed off kids on a playground all all fighting each other for control of the playground. You know, think about it. It's not a conspiracy theory. It doesn't require a genius to understand it. Look at any typical playground where a bunch of pissed off kids are acting like idiots. Rename the playground Earth and you've got it. That wasn't so hard, now was it? <laughs> but we're in the process of growing up, metaphorically speaking. Humanity is the kid exiting the playground as it learns that there are better ways to conduct themselves. So that's why there's so much chaos, because that process is chaotic. We face our own inner hypocrite and our own inner Nazi, and the light comes on, and we see them all the mess in the dark room that isn't dark anymore because we found the light switch and we flipped it. Now we got to deal with it. Alrighty, I guess that's all I have to say on that for right now. I just kind of felt compelled. I've been seeing a lot of positive and a lot of negative and everything in between reflected in my reality and in the realities of everybody else around me. Like a fractal pattern. Like one of those fractal generator computer softwares. And you sit there and watch the fractal just form and see how no matter how different all the individual parts get, they all still have similarities. And I look around at that, I look around at the contrast. And you can see themes, you can see patterns. As the weeks go by, you can see that everyone's running on the same basic theme. And you could put symb 
symbolic representation to describe those themes. Because that's what words are. It's what language is. Language is only noise with syntax. From the perspective of the birds, they're speaking rationally and you're chirping nonsense. So it's only subjective symbolism and metaphor. That's what words are. That's what the definitions of words are. So when I look at the fractal pattern that all of humanity has in common right now, and I say, oh, I'm going to do a video about that pattern, and I'm going to call it addiction and satisfaction. That's just words. That's just symbols. That's just the way I am choosing to describe that pattern. It doesn't mean it's the only way. And it doesn't mean that there aren't common patterns and threads that all of humanity is experiencing simultaneous right now. Of course there are. So there's going to be just as much commonality as, as difference. And that's always. So you may or may not see the common patterns within the collective human experience because maybe you're too focused on the differences. Or you might see the common patterns, but you might decide to do a video and call it something else. You might not agree that addiction and satisfaction is the proper name for it. You might think that something else suits it better. That's fine. Because we're both talking about the same thing. No matter what. So it's all good. We're just unique individuals and we express that out differently. It doesn't mean we're talking about two different things. It means we're talking about the same stuff in two different ways. And that's called individuality. That's called uniqueness. That's called not being a fucking Nazi. So that's it. I'm I'm done with this rant. Yeah, cool. Um obviously I woke up not too long from a nap, you know, prior to starting this video, so by God, I really need to pee. Not that you all needed to know that, but, you know, it is it it is true. So I'm going to go do that right now while this video processes. So you all have a good day, and thanks for watching. Paradigm Shift and Education Comedy.